Hey YouTube, how's it going? So last week I put up a tutorial showing two different techniques on how to get a metallic finish using Game of Thrones Hand of the King pins. One of the things I kind of accidentally stumbled upon that really resonated well with a ton of you and I decided to make another follow-up video to dedicate to showing more of it is using very fine metallic pigment powders to get a really sort of a, a DIY powder coat finish. You know, so pretty much no paints, no metallic paints used, just a simple clear coat obviously on top, but also just a black base coat. And I found that gave a really realistic, something is very similar to if you're into molding and uh, casting, basically a cold cast finish without having to go through the process of making a mold and uh, pouring silicone. Really neat stuff. So anyways, this video is dedicated to exploring a little bit more of how I got those metallic finishes as well as showing you what a silver metallic finish looks like and a gold metallic finish. My name's Yasu. I run a little 3D print prop shop called Hero Creations where I go through and I make rad things like props, costumes, armors from your various favorite television shows, video games, and movies. If this is stuff that is your jam, you should totally hit the subscribe button. Anyways, let's jump into the episode. So to kick off this test, I used resin prints using my new Beam 3D Prism 3D printer, which is an up and coming, soon to be announced printer that I've been testing for a little while, as well as the accompanying Beam 3D resin, which is a four or five nanometer resin compatible with pretty much any printer on the market. That is your uh, one how D7s, your any cubic photons, the frozens, even the form labs printers can use this resin. Pretty cool stuff. But anyways, the focus is on the technique, not the resins in the printers. So once I'd pulled it off the, uh, the printer, cleaned off the excess resin and cured it, I set about to spray coat the entire thing with a thin coat of flat black paint. Not too thick, just enough to get it a nice even coating, a nice covering, so it would be completely black and not the base resin color. So once the paints were all dry, the next step was to cover it in the pigments. For this video, I used Jacquard Pearl X Silver and Super Bronze pigments, which the bronze, I mean, it's a bronze, definitely, but could also be distinguished as a sort of a dark Venetian gold. Really, really nice stuff. Basically, I take a, uh, an old soft brush, dab it into the pigments, and then just sort of brush it into every nook and cranny, just trying to get as much coverage as possible. Not worrying about if there was too much pigment or anything like that, because that would get taken care of in the next step. One thing I found was that a little bit of pigment does go a very long way. So like literally like less than a teaspoon of stuff could get a ton of coverage over, over a part. Once I felt like I'd gotten good coverage with the metal pigments, I brought it over to my airbrush station where I used the compressed air in my compressor to just blow away any excess pigments, leaving just the thin, sheer finish of the, the very fine powders that stuck. Basically that first layer, which I gotta admit gave it a really nice sheen. Now, while the powers do an okay job of sticking to the print, you definitely want to clear coat the whole thing. Otherwise, it's just gonna rub off on your fingers and that's no fun. So for that, actually, I tested two different clear coats. I used shellac, just regular ordinary shellac that you buy in a hardware store, and water-based polyurethanes. Both of these work amazing. They don't seem to chemically react with either the silver or the super bronze, which is a plus, so it stays very lustery and strong. The only thing is I kind of was a bit of a derp and I used a satin finish, so that did dull the final kind of sheen, but I actually kind of like it. I imagine if you use a gloss finish or a gloss clear coat, you would have a much shinier look. And that is how I did a DIY-like powder coat 
of my 3D prints. Now I imagine this really could apply to any surface and not just resin 3D prints. I just happen to use the resin 3D prints that I had on hand because they're super clean right off the build plate pretty much. I imagine your regular FDM prints can do it. Obviously your resin cast can probably do this. Who knows? I, foam might work too. I don't know. I haven't tested and I'd love to know if anyone else has tested this technique at all. Now a couple safety considerations. Gloves. You gotta wear gloves. These things are very fine powders and it's like it's worse than glitter. It gets everywhere. I got all over my camera when I was filming this. So wear gloves while you're doing this whole process on both hands. You also want to wear a rest bear because these are very fine ultra fine particles, you know, under uh, 20 microns. So basically you can barely see this and chances are you're breathing this in if you're not wearing a rest bear. So wear a rest bear. Be safe people. Your health is not worth sacrificing for cosplay or prop making or working in the shop. Health first. Anyway, so gloves and wet rest bear are pretty mandatory, but apart from that, the handling is pretty easy. I mean, not much in a way toxicity or anything like that. Just simple, basic safety precautions. So anyways, I hope this video was useful in showing you how you can get a cold cast like finish on your 3D prints without having to mold it up and pour resin. Anyways, if you found this video useful or you enjoyed watching it or you enjoy listening to me blabber on about a lot of things, you should totally hit that thumbs up button. It helps me by telling the YouTube algorithm that my videos are pretty cool and should be shown to more people. If you want to hear more and see more of my videos, you should totally hit the subscribe button. Anyways, Thanks for watching. Thanks for giving me some of your time and your day. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Toodaloo!